Bad thing I guess about the 360 is can't quite get everything on the same disc like you uh, can with the Blu-ray. Samara is the uh, Justicar, correct? Should I pick to go with me? Grunt I'll do and Gears I'll do. Forge, uh uh. Up the hell raider. Chat, yeah, generally has problems loading. Welcome to Nosastra, Commander Shepard. We've been instructed to waive all docking and administration fees for your visit. My name is Karina. 
If you need information about the area, it would be my pleasure to assist you. So how's everyone uh, doing tonight? I'm really a bit more energetic than I was last night. Thank goodness I had a bit of a nap before I started playing. the gateway to the Terminus Systems, Commander, that element of risk requires greater security. Liara Tassoni vouched for your conduct and paid all fees you would normally incur. She also asked that I direct you to speak with her at your convenience. She's near the trading floor. Thank you. Again, welcome to our city, Commander. Please enjoy your stay. Correct. So, um... Can I see you guys? Can I see anything? I, I can't get the camera to work on Skype, oh. unfortunately. Okay. Um, but I guess you can see what's going on in the live chat, or in the, um, chat stream video. What happened? But... Probably can I hear people? I... No, um... <laughs> Oh, they're not you're the only one there? Yeah, I am the only one here right now. And I'm just <laughs> one of the fans uh, in the uh, chat room next to the live stream. That's funny. Yeah, everyone else has gone off to parties or something <laughs> or other. So I'm just, I'm the lone guy. <laughs> you're stuck, you're stuck receiving calls from the people you told to sign up. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Maybe you should. Maybe you should just go out too, because I'm really tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mean, so how long have you been voice acting for out of curiosity? Like, how how did you get into it? Uh, <clears throat> I have been an actor for a really long time, but I was in a company called The Groundlings. Have you ever heard of that? I have not. No. It's a comedy and improv company in Los Angeles, and. Uh, like I was there when Will Ferrell was there and, you know, people that you would probably have heard of. And somebody saw me in a show there and I was actually doing an improvisation where it was a panel and I made up that my character was like the voice of the snuggle, snuggy fabric softener, you know, like, oh, I was talking like this. And, so there, was a, and there was a voiceover agent in the audience. So he then, you know, got me into voiceovers. So that's how it happened. And, and mostly we audition now at home, you know, we all have home recording equipment and, you know, we still go out and do it, but a lot of it's just at home, especially video games. I audition for Mass Effect at home. So that's how that was. So what was it like working as uh, somebody's voice for Mass Effect? Uh, how do they approach you with the character? Well, you know, they send a breakdown of what they want. So when you audition, you have kind of an idea what they want and you uh try to remember i should always i should go back and look it up i do remember that when i got the job that they played my audition back for me and they said something about that they liked how i had done it because everyone else had done it very kind of ethereal because i think their description was kind of confusing and so whatever I had done wasn't ethereal, and that's what they liked. And then, you know, they're very specific when you do these. You know, they 
they um at least Ginny, Ginny who directed the Mass Effect 2, she is very specific. So, you know, we kind of settle on the voice and the range and then uh, based on the audition, what they liked. I mean, they said what they liked, and then she tracks you back. You know, you 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 know, I worked eight days on Mass Effect Two, which is a lot, like four hour sessions, and um, you know, they would check back frequently to make sure the voice matched, etc. That you know, like that you're doing the same voice on day five that you did on day one, and so they were very specific with her. It, the hardest part of Samara really was because she was set so you know, low and mellow in my voice, that when I had to shout or, you know, die or scream or kill someone, it was very hard to keep that same character in the voice when, you know, that was sort of atypical for her voice. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, above and beyond. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so have you actually played any of the uh, games that you've uh, voice acted for? Have you had the chance to play Mass Effect 2 or? My son has played Mass Effect 2. I wanted him to be here, but actually he's out tonight. But my son has played it. And so, oh God, I just rubbed my eyes and I made I made guacamole for dinner. So I have chilies on my eyes. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I'm not, you know, in all honesty, because I'm a mom, I have two kids and an actor. I don't have a lot of time to play them. So, but he is a big video gamer, so I kind of rely on him. I go in there every now and then and, you know, I sort of sort of know the arc of Mass Effect, and I did one time look on YouTube and find all kinds of Samara clips on YouTube, some of which were oddly changed <laughs> so, <laughs> and inappropriate. <laughs> so have you ever just looked back and like, oh, why did I like voice it this way? My inflection like this. Oh or yeah. Sure. Well, because you know, the, you know, games are changing now. Um, my husband did. Patrick, what game did you do where you had the helmets on? Where I had what? Where you had the whole gear on, the helmets and everything? Uh, oh, that was Saints Row 3, right? Yeah, I did Saints Row 1 and 2, actually, also. And my husband's in Saints Row 3. And in Saints Row 3, you know, they did it with headgear on and moving around, and they were recording them while they acted. That's really unusual and new what they usually do you know i'm sure you know you know they have a, a mic a mic and a good stand and you have your copy and you know you're going through just your part and sometimes you get a cue line in but oftentimes you don't so it's kind of hard it's really up to the director you know they write really explicit stage directions about what you're responding to but you know, they go pretty fast so it's pretty easy to miss something or, or read it in a way that that when you would see the game you'd think oh that that wasn't at all how I would have said it if I would have known that was going to happen but you know they do their best but they are they're really they're really complex so definitely I've said things that I later thought I would have said differently mm -hmm. now uh, one I guess point of clarification someone wants to know uh, in the chat is uh, did you also voice uh, Morinth? I voiced Morinth when she was me, yes. Right? Is that what the question is? I guess, yes. Yeah. Someone. Uh, yes, I did. I didn't voice her, obviously, when she was her, but I did have to take on her voice, her characteristics sometimes. Yeah. And in the new game, I don't think I can say much about, but I do a couple other voices in that, too. Okay. Um, now, some people are uh, curious, is, there, is Samara going to be uh, a romance option for the King of the Shepherd in the new game? I don't think I'm allowed to say anything about the new game. <laughs> I, don't, I can't say anything. Okay, understandable. Um, <laughs> I mean, they make you sign, you know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, all sorts of fun NDAs, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. So, uh, what, what, what is it like working for, say, in the, doing voice acting for Bioware as compared to, say, um, I 